Hello everybody and welcome to Tips to Heal. This is Angela Mero and I'm so happy that you could join me. Um, what do you need to drink more of for optimal health? That's the question. As I travel through my journeys of sickness, um, I learned the true importance of water. That's right, water. So the tip for today is to drink more water. In 2017, hydrate and then hydrate some more. Uh, when you're sick and you're in pain, um, you're really not thinking about drinking uh, water or how much water you're drinking. Um, as I studied the various ailments that were plaguing me, uh, breast cancer, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, bronchitis, asthma, fibromyalgia, anemia, and degenerative arthritis, whew, that's a mouthful, I discovered how thirsty I and my body really, really were. Um, did you know that losing as little as 2% of your body's water, um, the water content can impair your physical performance? Um, our bodies are two-thirds water, like the earth. Um, maintaining our water levels is critical for optimum health. The brain um, can become impaired um, and even with mild dehydration. The fluid loss experienced with exercise um, can affect us. It can affect our mood. It can affect our concentration, our memory, um, and even feelings of anxiety and fatigue. I experienced chronic fatigue, chronic sinus headaches, um, chronic congestion, severe congestion, and uh, oh yeah, chronic pain and constipation. All of these are clear indicators of dehydration. Um, I suffered from dehydration on a regular basis because I didn't drink enough water. I drank water, just not enough water. Um, when we increase our water intake, it can decrease the risk of kidney stones. It's also helpful for weight loss. Um, it helps to increase the metabolism and also it makes you feel fuller if you eat or drink a half hour before you eat then you're not, you know, you won't tend to eat as much as you would normally do. So that's a good point to have. Half hour before you eat, have a little water. Water is the body's transportation system. Um, your nutrients to your cells, your organs, um, your tissues, regulating your body temperature, uh, removing toxins and waste, um, and it also aids your digestion. It cushions our joints, uh, lubricating them. You know, so the question is always, how much water should I drink? Well, the old adage, eight glasses a day, that's 64 ounces of water, and that works if you're 120 pounds. But typically, from what I've learned, a half your body weight in ounces is an adequate amount of water. And of course, if you're dealing with health issues, I would say increase that. Um, when you don't drink enough water, you starve your whole system. So proper hydration, has been known to prevent disease, prevent cancer. Um, it has been said that colon cancer risk can be decreased by 50% with proper hydration, as well as bladder cancer, 50%, and possibly breast cancer as well. And there are reports to support what I'm saying. Um, it, if you drink enough water, you have less joint pain, and it flushes out the waste and that nasty bacteria. It's great for your skin. and um, if you're feeling a little cranky, uh, you may be dehydrated. You know, have a little water. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to have a little water. Take care and choose your water very carefully. The EPA says that the presence of contaminants does not necessarily um, indicate that the water poses a health risk. So they have these various... CCLs, and that's a contaminant candidate list. And they have four of them. Um, they contain a list of contaminants that they um, don't subject to any rigorous testing or regulation. And they say that they naturally occur or they're known to occur. I'm going to show you that list here in a minute, and you be the judge. Now, please don't resort to bottled water. According to an article by DrX.com, a recent German study um, found that a single bottle of water had over 25,000 chemicals. That's nasty. Um, there's also um, a reference to a PLO 
PLOS research report, which I'll post, and you can read that for yourself as well as I speak. Bottled water is a big risk. It's cancer-causing estrogenic activity um, is increased three times when it's put in that bottle um, than it is in glass bottles. Um, it's leaching chemicals into that water and pray that it isn't in a hot environment because the leaching process would be increased. And there are probably multiple sources of contamination other than what I'm talking about, the plastic bottle itself and the water itself could be contaminated. Americans buy more than a half a billion bottles of water a week. Now, some say the number is 30 billion bottles a year. I've seen uh, that there were 41.8 billion in 2012 at a cost of $60 billion. We're spending a lot of money for water that isn't healthy. EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, found 38 contaminants in 10 popular brands. Uh, bacteria, fertilizer, uh, Tylenol, industrial chemicals. So stop risking your health uh, with contaminated water from oftentimes unknown sources. Check it out. And the plastic is truly bad for our environment. Do you know that it takes 450 years for that plastic to biodegrade? According to an article um, on BanTheBottle.net, uh, right here in the United States, 24% of the bottled water sold is either Pepsi's Aquafina, which is 13 part of the market share, they're the larger, or Coke's Dasani, which is sharing 11% of the market. Both brands are bottled, purified municipal water, water you can get straight from your tap. It's not healthy. And it's really no healthier than your tap water, which we will discuss. Please check out an article on EchoWatch.com. It's about Erin Brockovich. She has brought to our attention a chemical, a carcinogenic chemical, chromium-6, that is said to be found in 218 million of Americans' water. So please check that article out. I'll leave that information in the description area so that you can follow up on that. Get a filter, people. Check to make sure that that filter filters out microorganisms, chemicals, trace minerals, all the stuff that is nasty. You want to get one that actually filters that stuff out. It's possible to get one that um, filters out fluoride, and I would recommend that because fluoride is not our friend, but that's a whole other video. Most of the ones that are out there... The simple purified or simple filters actually just affect taste. They're moving uh, chlorine and things that make the water taste bad. You want one that um, deals with microbiologically unsafe or water that has unknown quality. You want to try to filter out as much as you possibly can. Because during this study, and I knew before, I've heard it years ago, pharmaceuticals are in your water. Drugs that people take. Um, because of the digestive process, some of that stuff is absorbed by the body and a lot of it is just waste matter. Plus, we have a lot of throwaways coming from manufacturers of these pharmace pharmaceuticals. So, there's a couple of articles and I'll put them in the description below so you can check them out if you're interested. Um, Eternal medicine, external medicine, discarded um, many contaminated drugs. Um, and 40 million, American, 40 million Americans drinking water. That's a report done by Scientific American. And pharmaceuticals found in drinking water is the Associated Press. They did an investigation. Very interesting what their findings were. One of the comments by one of the people that actually did water treatment, they said that there is no such requirement um, if the detected contaminant is not regulated under the, safety, uh, the Safe Drinking Act. But here's what the EPA says is okay under the Safe Drinking Act to be in your water. And they say that our water is pretty safe. Check it for yourself. I would beg to disagree. You can check with EWG, Environmental Working Group, uh, National Drinking Water Database. And hopefully you can find your water in your area to see how bad it really is. EWG also has a water filter uh, buying guide, which is really, really helpful to tell you what types of things are being filtered and what types of filters to buy for your particular situation. It all depends on what you want to have filtered, and I say get the best that you can afford. Now that you have the mindset to be on the right track 
with water. Know this, and I can't say it enough. We are like the earth, two thirds water. There's only three thirds in a whole. So the predominance of who we are is water. And we've got to keep that balance. Much like the ocean, it has to be balanced. Everything is regulated in your body by water. Dehydration can be said to be the cause of painful degenerative diseases, including cancer and AIDS. There are reports that support that. According to an awesome book by Dr. Fite Doon, I'm not going to even try to say his last name. I'm going to call him Dr. B. It's called You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty. Awesome book. Put the description, put it in the description area below. I think it's definitely a must read. Proper water and salt and minerals can prevent these illnesses and even re reverse the damage that they've already done. Lack of water causes our body to be stressed and diseased. Essential amino acids are lost as a result of the body using them as antioxidants because you don't have enough water to wash away toxic waste. So the body has to start doing its own battle and reconverting things whose job is to do something else to help where we're neglecting by putting the proper amount of water. It has to be neutralized, those toxic waste, or it will destroy our system. Valuable amino acids are lost in order to compensate um, because we become mineral deficient. Disease is on its way, guaranteed. Just in case you didn't know, dry mouth is not the only indicator of thirst and dehydration. You're well dehydrated by the time you feel it in your mouth. Now, true thirst signals, according to Dr. B, for dehydration are asthma, allergies, hypertension, diabetes, and autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and MS. They're produced by dehydration. Water is a natural source of energy like hydroelectricity. It spurs us to life. We have to start to getting into essential water for life and salt is vital it's vital as well and it gets rid of acids i've heard a lot about the alkaline craze well salt gets rid of the acids in your cells that's how the body becomes alkaline you need water and salt to absorb calcium to regulate your blood sugar asthma and cystic fibrosis leaky gut leaky bladder and rheumatoid arthritis are associated with salt deficiency and dehydration. According to Dr. B, persistent and intentional dehydration reveals itself as disease. If we recognize that disease can be relieved with water, sounds so simple, disease goes away. We also need intracellular minerals to hold the water. We need calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, and selenium. A supplement like kelp uh, will also provide you with your proper needed iodine. The pH of the body should be 7.4. That's a neutral, maybe a little bit on the alkaline side, but that's in your cells. That's intracellular pH. Water, salt, minerals equal alkaline removing acidity, and it comes out through your urine. When toxic waste builds up, the body becomes acid. It's a proper breeding ground for disease. So let's get alkaline, and let's get rid of our dehydration. Water, half your body weight in ounces. Water, upon rising, two glasses to compensate for and offset the overnight dehydration that has occurred. A half hour before eating, a glass of water. Two and a half hours after eating, a glass of water. This aids your digestion and helps to make that digestive process not so much work. And for every quart of water, 32 ounces, you need one quarter of a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt, as well as other minerals to regulate cell volume, cell water cell volume. And you can buy trace minerals, and I do add that to my water from time to time. It covers the selenium, the calcium, the magnesium, the zinc, the potassium. And so 
those are ways that we can get it in. I would not recommend getting a supplement unless you're going to get a pure supplement. We can balance that with a well-balanced diet. So we want to do a well-balanced balanced diet of 80-20. 80% fruits and vegetables and high in protein, high in, uh, I'm sorry, high in potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, and selenium, and manganese as well. And your 20% can be protein, good grass-fed protein. Um, and definitely non-GMO, preferably organic. Get a filter. No more bottled water. It's poison. Our next video will be a continuation of water because it's already uh, a lot of time spent in this video and I don't want to belabor it but it's so much more to learn about water alkaline or not so much so please I thank you for those of you that have subscribed and I wish that the rest of you that are watching subscribe hit the subscribe button and please don't forget to hit the like button I appreciate you very much I hope that you tune in for the next segment where we continue water and uh, I hope you're having a great day or a great night wherever you may be. Until the next time, blessings.